Howdy there, ladies and gentlemen. Zelda42293 here. Welcome back to Let's Play Love is Strange. In the last video, we, uh, we got some news from Chloe that she is leaving Arcadia Bay. And the fuels are starting to hit pretty hard here. But, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this next part of the story. This is, uh, Wednesday, I believe. My head feels heavy when I wake up the next morning. And I swipe four times at my phone's alarm instead of the usual two. It takes me a bleary couple of seconds of rubbing my eyes and stretching to remember why my mind feels so weighed down. Oh, Chloe. I promised myself last night I wouldn't be too upset about Chloe jet setting off. At least on the outside. I mean, what I, I meant what I said yesterday. I do understand on the logical level why she wants to. And I really sincerely want her to be happy. And it would make me the biggest hypocrite in Oregon to call her out on leaving me behind in Arcadia Bay as she goes off to explore the world. I know that. But I've loved having her back in my life. It's taught me that some people really are irreplaceable. Chloe, most of all. I'm not crazy about the idea of losing that again. Losing her again. Yeesh. Right after I told myself I wouldn't be mopey, too. Time to get it together, self. <coughs> I roll out of bed, start, start pulling my clothes and things together. What's really important now is to focus on Chloe. Make the most out of our time together. I need to get morning, fuzzy, morning muzziness out of my head first. But I'd really like to do something special for her. Make sure her parting memories of Arcadia Bay are good ones give her a compelling reason to come back. Okay, Max, you're gonna miss Chloe. How about we dwell on that after she's actually left? <clears throat> oh, and we're gonna need to take a photo. And a good photo. An award-winning photo. Sometimes I feel like time is actively working against me. Time to go splash some water on the, my, on the face, Max. Sadness hour is over. It's about time this day got rolling. <clears throat> But of course, when the door swings open and the smell of weed hits me, like a truck, my heart just goes speedy again. <coughs> hey, bedhead. Morning, burnout. She grins at me, lowering her joint and leaning back against the sink. She looks loose-limbed and carefree this early in the morning, arms bare and hair in puffs. Looks like she's waiting around to race some hell with Rachel again this morning. I know I must look like a mess, but at least it's nothing she hasn't seen before. I crossed by her to the sink, to the left, leaning over it and splashing some water up into my face, exhaling against my fingers. Chloe looking at me. I can feel it. You doing okay, Max? I straighten up and glance at her before patting off of my face. Yeah, I'm fine. You know I'm not a boring person. Who is? Still, she's looking at me, a little searching. Her joint goes ever red between her fingers. You sure, though? Your eyes are kinda... She makes a big gesture with her hands, indicating my entire face. Which isn't exactly helpful. Also smudgy like. Too smart. spreads wide, shit eating, and she leans towards me, bracing both hands on either side of the sink. Oh, really? For a second, I just blink her. She raises her eyebrow. Then again. Oh, you wish. I shove at her shoulder, and, she's, and she sways back laughing. I giggle too, and wish I hadn't already doused myself. I'd be suspicious to do it twice. I'm a contest too, but Somehow you manage to distract me even when you're not there. Chloe grins and rubs her joint panel against the sink. I'm counting on that. Anyway, Rachel will be here in a few minutes. Apparently today is going to be the big goodbye day. The word goodbye just drops another rock into the pit of my stomach, but I just nod. Is that your way of subtly telling me to get out of your Kool-Aid stained hair? 
First of all, how dare you suggest this color comes from anything but the finest bottle of man manic panic bad boy blue amplified hair dye. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it, folks? Second, absolutely not hippie. I was planning on running into you. She meets my eyes in an a straight, straight a little. Reach up to pinch a water droplet out of my pants. <clears throat> yeah? Why? For one thing, you look cute first thing in the morning. Your hair's all floofy. Floofy. I love that word. As I'm brushing down my admittedly floofy hair with my fingers, she continues. Also, Rachel has me booked all day, but I wanted to know what your plans were. My plans? Yeah, hopefully I'll be free later on today, so if you wanted to do something like a contest or... She shrugs, suddenly unsure, and clicks her smush joint into the stall across her room. It misses the drain by about two feet. But just the fact that Chloe's still thinking about the contest at first, about me, even in the face of this huge shift in her life, definitely want to hang out. But maybe today can just be a Max and Chloe day? She looks at me again, surprised, then she grins. Dude, every day is a Max and Chloe day. Like fucking Thelma and Louise. Have you got something in mind? Not yet, but I will by the time this afternoon rolls around. It's a surprise. Chloe's eyes go even brighter. Gives me something to look forward to as I suffer through all the Scanner Bros tears. You're gonna break their hearts. She just nods cheerfully. They'll get used to it. Her phone beeps and we both look down. Chloe checks the message, then shoves it back in her pocket. Rachel. She's waiting outside, apparently. She lives off this shit, you know? I think men's tears might make her younger or something. That does sound like Rachel. Mystical, powerful, and daunting. Go easy, alright? I feel kinda bad for them. No promises. She reaches out and ruffles my hair with one hand. I'll catch you later, dork. And I'll text you when I can meet up. Okay, tell Rachel I'm expecting her to be the responsible one. She already knows. That will do. She winks at me, then slips out the bathroom door. So, she, so that gives me the half hour before class starts to think of something special for Chloe. Good, good, Max. Great think, great forward thinking. Playing a balancing act of thinking about Chloe and getting ready for class is even harder than I thought it would be. Well, all I'm bummed she'll be cutting class, and I won't be able to see her. It's not as though she was the first time she's ever done it. Also, I'm kind of glad to be lined up as the person she comes back to at the end of the day. It keeps me feeling significant. Even though I know it's probably poor planning to let the contest take a day off and only have three contest days long, I think it's a good idea to have some time for Chloe and just to focus on each other. Plus, if she's going to be busy for most of the day, that gives me a bit too planned for Chloe in the meantime. And what I want to do for Chloe today. I'd like to think to ha I think I'd like to have something to give her. Some kind of memorabilia to remind her of Arcadia Day. Or of me. For a moment that makes me smile. The idea of White Knight Chloe receiving a token from her lady fair before setting off into the grand Arthurian journey. Then I catch myself. Jeez. Schoolgirl crush Max? Schoolgirl crush much Max? I shake my head. Push that more than semi worried thought out of my mind for now, and focus on thinking of a gift Chloe might like. <coughs> After spending a couple of seconds looking around my room, I come up with what I think are three Chloe -y options. Uh, <laughs> Make her a mixtape, something personal. Chloe does love to rock out. And she's going to be spending a lot of time in that car. I know her music tastes well enough by now to pull together a playlist I think she'd like. Something to keep her awake and ear on the road. Maybe I can also slip in some songs I've been trying to get her to listen to. Even if she's not crazy about them, it'll at least be a way to have her thinking of me. But hopefully, in a 
Oh, man, Max, my musical talent, the best friend who I miss so much away. Not a, not in a, jeez, what kind of loser puts three acoustic tracks right next to each other away? I can probably make one after class. Maybe you do a little cover to go along with it. Sounds like a plan. What's really important is making this decision about Chloe. I want her to feel like I'm supporting her decision, not holding her back. It's hard. Walking the balance of knowing I'm really, really going to miss her, and being happy for her, knowing she's doing what she wants to do. Chloe deserves the world and more, but I just hope her happy ending isn't one where we're apart. Mine definitely isn't. Her getting ready to leave is starting to make me really realize that. I'm starting to think I should have put that into words before this week. Just as I'm running the risk of riding the train back all the way into Mopesville, though, my phone keeps. Luckily, too, because apparently I only had two minutes to get to class. I hurriedly shrugged my bag over my shoulder, scrolling through my text with my other hand. Looks like I'll be free around four. Does that work for you? My schedule is totally clear. I'm at your beck and call. You gonna get me hinted about this surprise thing, or what? I think I like it. Dude, of course I'm gonna like it. More specific. Nope. I wanna watch you shiver with anticipation. You're lucky I love you because you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> Just finish the damn whatever, okay? I'll see you at four. Also, Max, like, thanks for doing this. I know you're busy with the contest and school stuff. It's great to be able to hang out with you still. I'm glad we can. Patient. <laughs> Oh, yeah, of course. Nothing but the best for my BFF. Yeah, yeah, see you later. Don't be late for the date. <laughs> I'm gonna start charging you for those, I swear. <laughs> oh, Chloe. I end up skidding into Mr. Bugs' class three minutes late, but even the darkest of Victoria's glares can't wipe the stupid grin off my face. Ten minutes to four, and I'm actually starting to hope I can rely on Chloe's chronic lateness. I ended up getting to the boardwalk later than I expected, scrambling to get my work done for the class tomorrow, and getting caught up in brainstorming for the contest. In the end, I just decided to text Chloe, asking if she would mind meeting up here. She's the one with the truck, after all. And it's faster than Blackwell's bus, even if it's up to like a similar route. I dare you say that to my truck's face. But okay, we'll meet you at Boardwalk. I'm so, so atmospheric here too. It's hard to stay focused. With all the bright colors of storefronts and the sounds, the soft sound of the sea in the distance make me want to soak up the atmosphere. This is one of the only places in Arcady Bay that continually feels lively. I've always been more inclined with the quieter part, quieter parts of town, especially for photography. But there's still something so magical about places like this, on the border between civilization and nature. I wonder if Chloe's searching for more places like this, bustling, shining, the color and sound. She's definitely some, someone who's drawn to places and people that present life with her. Is she even looking for something? Or is she just desperate to leave this place specifically? Well, it's not like I'm going to figure that out just by standing here thinking about it. The only person who can answer that question is Chloe. Right now, I need the time to make sure her gift is perfect. Luckily, I was able to piece together a good playlist for Chloe before I left the dorm. Good, in my opinion, anyway. All I needed was to pick up from the shops with a protective cover. I think I've managed to strike a fine balance between I rock hard and feel nothing but rage against the machine punks have feelings too. I was also able to get some passable duels drawn on the disc before I closed the bus. I know Picasso, but I think Chloe's will be able to Chloe's able to make out some butterflies, a skull and crossbones, our faces. I hope she'll like it. Just as I pouted up to a little and to inspect it against the sunlight, I hear a shot from behind me. Max! I turn return, quickly having both hands behind my back to see Chloe a few yards away, climbing out of her truck and beating. Hey! 
I wait, I wait with one hand and I try my best to be subtle, slipping her gift back into my bag as she starts ambling over in my direction. I barely have time to look back up again before Chloe's right in front of me, wrapping her arms around my waist and lifting me nearly an inch off the ground. <laughs> God, are you a sight for sore eyes? Put me down! <laughs> she does, her hands still settled in my hips as she leans back to look at me, gritting at my half-hearted scowl. Don't pretend you're not happy to see me. Of course I'm happy to see you. That only makes her look more slug. So what was the so what was the damage? Chloe shrugs. Well, I think six years were added to Rachel's life. She told me to say hi, by the way. I'll have to say hi back later. She's counting on it. Chloe lets go of me and starts moving toward the edge of the wheel as slides me to the She gestures for me to follow her, and I hurry to match pace with her again. So why meet up here? Not that I don't appreciate the romantic atmosphere. Look at that. The best for you. She grins, satisfied. Is this your best then? <laughs> she tilts her head back, looking me from beneath her eyes, almost like a dare, smiling with her. She says, I know that, and it's supposed to make me catch, up, catch me off guard and say something stupid, probably so she can laugh at me. But I've been getting better at playing this game. I raise my chin, put one hand on my hip. Even, even as I feel my heart flutter. Disappointed? That gets her to grin even wider, and all the challenge goes out of her face, laughing and tipping her head back. Never. Actually, I needed to come here to pick up a few things. Chloe's eyes lift. She turns to face me, back and elbows balancing against the face that separates the sidewalk and sand. Like what? Like, um, new film, and... And... She looks so eager. As usual, she's seen right through me. Still, it could be fun to tease her a little longer. And more colored pencils, and... And... <laughs> she's still grinning, but now she's starting to look a little unsure. I decide to cover some stuff. And something for you. She brightens Strike springing up straight again. I can't help but grin back. My hands coming up to wrap my, to wrap around my bag strap. Score! I knew it. Subtle as a sledgehammer, Max. When she comes up to me all the way in my space, my eyes are roving around me curiously. It's hard to stand my ground, and I have to tilt my head back and bobs to look into her eyes. So where is it? You sure you want it right now? Yes, ew! One of her hands snakes beneath my arm towards my back. I shiver involuntarily as it brushes against my waist, then smack it away, shoving the bag farther behind my back. Grabby. Guilty as charged. Come on, Max, show me the money. I roll my eyes, but she just beams insistently at me. I reach back into my bag and withdraw it carefully. Okay, but it's your fault that there's no element of surprise. Chloe takes the disc cover from me and flips it open seriously. For a second, her eyes just skitter around the noodles, then she lights up. Dude! I shift from foot to foot, and suddenly just shut shied her delight. I know the drawings are crappy, but the music is mostly stuff you like. I promise, and this is great! I didn't even think about music! That was gonna be a real road trip. What's the point of even going anywhere if you can't jam out on the way? I knew being able to being able to thrash would still be a high in Chloe's priority list. I smile. Oh, that's not all right, GRRL. Wild child. I put on some of my tracks on there too. There's no way out of the hipster earscape. You did? When I meet her gaze again, I fully expect her to be teasing, locked and loaded with an arsenal of cheap jives against my musical taste. But actually her eyes are super warm. It, it catches me off guard. That's awesome. Thanks, Max. Just 
just make sure you're thinking of us little people from time to time. She bristles a little with that, tucking her jacket from her over her shoulders. For a moment, I lose eye contact with her. Are you seriously worried about that? As if I could ever forget. As if that isn't the biggest thing to worry about. Then why then when you find out that your best friend is leaving for an inter intermediate indeterminate amount of time, especially when yours truly is guilty of exactly that. Still, I try to keep my tone light, trying to stand beside her, lean back on the fence. Well, you never know. I heard there's a lot of world out there. Really, it's easy to get distracted. Distracted from what? I looked at her confused, and the look on her face startles me. It looks like she's really deep in thought, but she's trying to make a decision. Whatever the decision is, she seems to settle on it, and looks back at me and her Her eyes are really determined, and kind of intense. My mouth goes dry. I feel myself stand up a little straighter. Listen, Max, I want to... She, ha she hesitates just for a moment. In the space of that one second, her phone beeps. It's not a loud sound, but both of us jump up. We glance at each other, and I giggle as she huffs and reaches for her pocket. My heart is beating way really too fast. It's Joyce. She wants to come early tonight so we can make dinner together or something. I'd barely given any thought to how Joyce must be taking this. Now there's a pang in my chest. You should go. We'll have tomorrow and Friday to hang out and work on the project. Besides, it's your mom. Chloe chews on her for a moment. Then she looks up at me, suddenly bright-eyed again. Come back to my place? What? She grins at me, autumn look caught between her teeth. Come on, it'll be great. And it'll make Joyce happy again. It'll make Joyce happy, you know, just like the old times. Cooking dinner together, blanket boards, pillow fights. It's a Wednesday. I have class tomorrow. We're definitely going to need to crack down and take a contest on too. This is really no time to be set staging improv to sleepovers. But Chloe is still beaming at me, consistent and almost quetish. Her eyes brow, her eyebrows raised, one hand on her hip. If I say okay and regret it, dude, there's no one to blame but myself. I can't stay up too late. It's like Chloe's whole body just eliminates. She straightens and claps her hands together like a kid, <laughs> her grin stretching wide across her cheeks. Yes! And without much more ado, she grabs my hand and starts dragging me back toward her trunk. This is gonna be hella awesome, Max. Choice will definitely bring her cooking skills if you're here. I should definitely be feeling just... I should definitely be feeling some regret or an indecision about this poor choice of time management. Just like how I should have felt self-control over a few seconds ago. <laughs> but Chloe's hand is really warm in mine. I'm so full, I think I might never eat again. Chloe's was right, and Joyce was excited to see me. Probably because it was meant another, been another helping hand in the kitchen. The two of us plant, ended up doing most of the work, which is likely the way Chloe planned it. Still, we made so much and ate so much that I don't think I'm going to be able to move again for another couple of hours. Chloe and I are on her bedroom floor now, sprawled underneath an admittedly very half-hearted blanket fort, made up of all the pillows we could find, and a blanket propped up by Chloe's that in her life. This is definitely a fire hazard. Just like me. She's lying on her back, arms folded under her head, and I'm on my elbows leaning back. We've drawn our knees up to conserve space, but our legs are still bracketed around each other. <clears throat> I'm exhausted, and it's only, what, seven? Ish. That's not a bad thing, though. Maybe we'll get to bed at a reasonable hour after all. Chloe groans, shifting a little to spread her arms out wide. Reasonable hour. Oh, right, because of the contest? Have you started coming up with a game plan yet? I tuck my head back. Chloe doesn't pay a lot of attention in her photography class, but I know she'll do the best with whatever I ask for. The contest is a lot of pressure on its own, but having Chloe's goodwill resting blindly on me is heavy too. 
sort of. The lighthouse should be a good place for the specific shot, because it's you and me, right? And we have so many memories there. Chloe nods a little bit. Her bare feet tap against my ankle. What's going to be so hard is working with wide shots. Everything at the lighthouse is so big. It's going to be hard to capture it all. Still, I think it'll work out. I mean, if you're the subject, that is. I mean, if you're the subject, I think. There's a loud creak of a floorboard beneath us. And Chloe comes up on, up and onto her arms in a matter of seconds, eyes wide and wincing as her wrists crack. If I'm the subject? Her eyes start, her surprise startles me too, and I nearly lose my balance, upsetting the blanket and slightly hitting my elbows a little too hard against the floor. I thought Chloe already assumed she would be the subject, but in retrospect, I guess the both of us were too distracted to actually talk about it. I turn a little red. Kind of careless, Max. Um, yeah, I, I thought that I, uh... I didn't ask. Sorry. So if you don't want to, that's totally... No! No, I mean, I'll do it. I just... She glances away. It takes me a second to realize she looks a little shy all of a sudden. It's such an unfamiliar expression on her that it takes me a second to recognize it. If you wanted a model, you should have asked Rachel. Ooh, this is a tough decision. Uh, I'm gonna go with your eye-catching. Your plenty eye-catching yourself. The second it's out of my mouth, I feel a flush coming up my neck. Chloe props herself up higher on her elbows, pointing at me. Are you hitting on me? Oh, here we go, folks. <laughs> now I'm the one who has to look away. She just laughs, but I can feel her still watching me and waiting. The point is, I'm not that worried about centering the shot if you're the subject. When I glance back at her, she just nods, black thoughtful, then grins at me again before lowering herself under her back again, hands behind her head. Sure, okay. Well, if you're not worried, I'm not worried. Well, I think that covers that topic. Besides, photography is something that happens in the moment. It's not really something you can plan out. It's kind of romantic that way. I look at Chloe again, but she's still looking up, away from me. I wish I knew what she was thinking about. Chloe and I can read each other so well, but there are still moments where I can't get in her head. The silence is broken by a little sound of joys passing underneath the stairs, singing softly to herself. Chloe's fingers curl up. So you're already talking to Joyce about you. Chloe glances down at me in surprise, then grimaces and looks back up at the ceiling. <coughs> I knew it would be a comfortable subject, but I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, I mean, it didn't exactly go smooth. She cried. Max, it was fucking cruel. My home sympathy. Mom's tears are absolutely absolute worst. But in the end, she, like, she understood. She wants me to be happy. I don't like what she said yesterday. She said she was the same when she was young too. Her and um, my dad. She said with the gene pool I have, she shouldn't have expected anything less than a free spirit. <clears throat> like a bird. I can't think of a better way to describe Chloe. Joyce may have come down to roost, but the brace women were meant for flight. Chloe grins lazily up at me. Bird of prey. Her groan falters, and she comes up on her elbows again. What about you? Me? Yeah, are you a bird, Max? Her voice is like teasing, but there is a serious sort of look in her face I can't quite decipher. I'm sure I just chuckle, lean back, and close my own eyes. Sure. There's a sudden tug of my foot, and I almost come unseated. I prop myself back up on my forearms, and I look back up at Chloe in surprise. Her fingers are still wrapped around my bare ankle, and there's a searching, almost, searching, almost severe look in her eyes. I'm serious. Seriously asking if I'm a bird? Max.
do you ask? Where is this coming from? Chloe lets go of my ankle, sits up a little, crosses her arms over heels and rests her chin on my knees. But I'm not allowed to know if you're a bird or not. Well, it's not like it's something I'm keeping a secret, but it just seems like such an abstract question coming from you, Chloe. Her eyebrows raise and she grins at me from behind where her face is buried, childlike behind her knees. Oh my god, are you accusing me of being fake deep? You, Max Caulfield, accusing me? She looks so smug. I kick, her, I, I kick at her shin, and she kicks back at mine, laughing. First of all, you could never dream of reaching my level of fake deepness. And she nods in agreement, chuckling, I go on. Besides, I have no idea if I'm a bird or not. You decide. Then she sobers up a little, and she eyes me again. Eyebrows knit slightly together like she's working something out. I sit still, feeling kind of small under her gaze. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Anyway, between you and my mom and Rachel, everyone who's actually matters knows now. Well, that's good, right? No loose ends. She looks away from me again, lips curling a little. I hate putting it like that. She's definitely up. Something's definitely up with her. I'm not sure if it's something I'm supposed to ask after or leave alone. But Chloe knows I'm nosy, so I think she expects it when I push myself forward on my hands toward her. Are you feeling okay? She glances at me, surprised, then away again. I'm fine. Nervous? Then she gets to look back again for a minute. I think I've misstepped, but then she gives an airy, disbelieving chuckle. Kinda. I nod, trying for a sympathetic and knowing expression. But I must screw it up. I must screw it up because she immediately shakes her head. It's not what you're thinking. I'm not nervous about, like, driving or where I'm gonna go or whatever. It's just... Her mouth keeps moving for a moment after her voice trails off, and it's unsettling. I don't think I've ever seen Chloe worthless before. Her lack of a brain-to-mouth filter is worrying sometimes, but at least it's consistent. <coughs> this time, I have to lean to the left to catch her eyes again, and she needs them, a little wary. Then tell me what I should think. Chloe, I'm not mad at you. You know that, right? I just want to know what's going on with you. I want to get it. Like you said yesterday. It's not like you owe me explanations or anything, but you know you can tell me anything, right? And I'll listen. I want to be there for you. It startles me when she leans forward, not breaking eye contact. For a second, her faces are very, very close. Then she crosses her arms her knees and rests her chin on her looking up. You already are here. Her calves are pressing in mine now, arms heavy where they, where they are draped over my kneecaps and I swallow. She's grinning up at me, cat-like and intrigued. C come on, I was being serious. I curse to myself for stuttering. But Chloe doesn't seem to notice. She just pushes herself off my knees again. I mean, serious, too. Max, it's just cool that you're here. It's cool that we can still hang out, and that you're making this time for me and being a dumbass. Being a dumb... But she just laughs, stretching her arms over her head, then flipping up the edge of the blanket beside her. Chill. Anyway, I'm in a movie mode. I'll help us digest. You got any suggestions? You can't complain when it pisses me off. The movie makes no fucking sense. It pisses you off. You watch it more than I have. Sure, sure, whatever you say, Jake Gyllenhaal. Does that make you Gretchen? Sounds good to me. She was cute in that movie. She tugs me up by the hand as we make our way through the crumbling port, then slides an arm around my shoulders, easy as anything. She 
he's still really poor. I don't know if it's because of Blanket Ford or because of me or because of her. But it's nice to lean into anyway. Alright guys, we're going to cut it off here. Uh, seems like stuff's getting really, really interesting. Um, I'm really excited to see the rest of this. Um, like and favorite this video if you haven't. Uh, subscribe if you want. Um, follow my Facebook page, Warren Graham. Everything will be in the description. Uh, but for now, my name is Zelda42293, and I will see you all in the next video.